Welcome to season two, episode two of the Ask Zophie podcast. I am going to share a quote from Love Notes in a moment. But before I do that, I am, I haven't done this before ever, I don't think. I am sort of doing a mini batch recorded podcast. So I'm actually recording today's podcast episode after last week's on the same day. So I feel like I've traveled forward in the future and it's really confusing for my little pea brain. So when I get to my behind the scenes, I'm like, oh, what do I do? Because it's the same day as last week. At some point, I'm probably gonna like batch record three or four in one day if I can manage it. That's gonna cause major issues with, with one's brain. Let's see how that goes. Anyway, before I get into anything, I am gonna share a quote from Love Notes for you. Let's see what comes up. Okay, bear with me a minute while I just clear my mind and tune in. Okay, I haven't seen this one for ages. Sometimes quotes come up and I almost can't remember them. All right, your heart will not drown in me in my love. Only fear will fade, be washed away in an abyss of adoration. Your heart will not drown in me, in my love. Only fear will fade, be washed away in an abyss of adoration. And on the other page, it's let me love you. And I think the first quote speaks to a little bit to the fact that Sometimes we have this idea, fear tells us that we're just going to drown in whatever's coming up in life. And it's only ever fear or the mind that kind of metaphorically drowns. This is all that will be washed away. And when that's washed away, all that's left is inevitably and invariably love because you can't lose what's real and love is real only the fear stuff isn't real and one of the things I see time and again one of my favorite things to say is fear speaks loudest when you're on the precipice of great change and I believe in this in this truth and the mind will come at you with whatever it can when you're about to grow transcend fear, develop. So it's recognizing that yes, some stuff might fade as you transcend, as you up level, but it's not the stuff that, that you actually want to hold dear to you. I don't know if that makes any sense, but that's what came up for me when I read that. All right, so today I'm actually sharing something that I shared with one of my lovely members, and she's a dear, dear lady who's also been through Manifesting Miracles with me, and she follows me on Instagram. And I can't even remember what she asked me now in her DM on Instagram, but I shared something with her that had come up for me that was really helpful. And she was like, well, you should share this on a podcast. And so I'm sharing it on a podcast for you. I... I know it's going to help some people. I know it's going to be something that, as I always say, you can use what I'm sharing today relative to the topic I'm talking about or relative to anything. But the topic I'm talking about specifically, I know will help a lot of people as well as using it in a more general way. But I'm sharing today on how to stop hating on your looks. This is something that I know heaps about because when I was growing up, I was definitely, I mean, I was never like ugly. I mean, on the one hand, I don't believe God makes ugly, but talking in, in human terms, but I was actually what you'd call painfully thin and not one of the sort of the cool kids at school and not someone that that was you know most of the boys would think oh she's attractive actually uh, let me share <laughs> let me share this as a bonus behind the scenes okay so in short growing up 
some of you will know this growing up my life was incredibly what I would call challenging for lots of different reasons and it's interesting I was sharing with Daniel the other day how I have worked with many hundreds of clients over the years that I've been working as a therapist and a coach and obviously I did a lot of one-to-one work for a long time but I actually have never encountered anyone who's been through a situation that is quite similar to mine Um, and suffice to say that the pain I went through and there was a lot of it was very unseen and hidden and just internal which adds to it you know if someone is is physically abusive to you obviously that's not cool but people can see oh look there's there's a there's a bruise or there's physical evidence of the fact that you've been mistreated when the 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 mis- mistreatment is that a word i'm making it a word is is sort of not physical and it's not seen or understood by others, it then adds fuel to the fire of it and creates a different level of pain that one has to contend with. And if you are listening to this and you think, that's me, then I extend so much love to you because I understand very clearly how that how that goes, how that pans out. Um, I'm just doing my usual, am I recording check? Um, And I am recording, but okay. So yeah, my (laughs) getting back to my mini behind the scenes, I can see Susie's sneaking in. Um, I'm not sure she's gonna come and sit on my lap or if she's just thinking about it. But I wasn't, as I was saying before I got a little bit sidetracked by myself, my own thoughts, someone that would have been a popular girl among the boys at school. And I remember going to a school disco and I was, it was in secondary school. So I'd have been like 11, 12, 13 or something. And I seem to remember that people, I think like snogged at the back of the school disco on the, (laughs) against the wall, I think. I mean, it sounds really weird now I'm saying it, but I swear that's what happened. Did, did, did Did that happen? Did anyone else remember that? Anyway, at this point, I, in, in the ugly duckling years, I had a removable brace for a time. I had a fixed brace and then I think I must have had a removable one after it. Oh God, I remember feeling like, wow, that's anyone's ever had that. It feels like you've got like a piece of bread in your mouth, doesn't it? And I remember me painfully shy, socially awkward, all these different things, getting off the bus. This is another story, by the way. When I just had my removable brace fitted and seeing someone I knew and I thought, I can't think I'm being so awkward. Anyway. Speaking of the awkwardness, I was at this school disco and I remember this like it was yesterday and my Lord, I feel for that little version of me. Um, I remember taking out my removable brace and putting it in my pocket just in case somebody was like, hey, skinny legs, do you wanna go to the back wall of the disco with me? And obviously on some level, I knew that wasn't gonna happen, but I, I, I did it you know bless my heart just in case and of course nobody offered to go and snog whatever it was on the back wall with me and I just had to take my brace from my pocket at some point and pop it back in my chops (laughs) just makes my heart hurt thinking about poor little me back then but the point is I spent a great deal of my life hating it, my body for partly because of how it looked and also because when I was I also hated my life and felt trapped in my life so it kind of overlapped with that but when I was in school and um, actually this lasted until actually, sorry, Susie's coming up, university and beyond, I would have this thing where, some of you will recognize this, when you're in class and the teacher goes, you, what's the answer? And suddenly the spotlight is on you. I would get embarrassed and I would blush. And I really, really did not like that. It didn't happen very often, except in my head because of my personality and my anxiety. I replayed it again and again and again. 
And so I have spent many, many years a, wishing I was just non-existent, wishing I could just die, and B, wishing that I could be somebody else, be in someone else's body, not be trapped in my body. So you can imagine I didn't look as I wanted to, and my body didn't respond in the way that I wanted to, and I just wanted to be quote unquote normal. So the point is, still today, I, I have some kind of like ghosts in my mind of those thoughts that want to crop up and this is kind of what I'm going to talk about but I really uh, the reason I'm sharing this is that I want you to know that I understand look I know logically that I don't look I, I really like this word it makes me laugh I don't look revolting today but I because of how critical my inner critic is and because of all of the years of really hating on myself it's so easy for me to permit in a deluge of negative thoughts related to myself and if you could be in my mind when that happens I think you'd most likely be shocked but I'm sharing it because I'm hoping that it's helpful and it's the truth and to let you know that I understand how it feels to to feel ugly to feel undesirable to feel unattractive to feel trapped in your body I've had that with the blushing thing, with the how I look thing, and also with um, my hypothyroidism. So I, I know how that goes. But anyway, again, before I get into that, <laughs> that was a sort of uh, a bonus behind the scenes <laughs> into my sad little old life as, as an adolescent. Um, and actually, as I'm saying that, I'll probably share more on that in future episodes, because I think it will be helpful, particularly for, for people who are in adolescence at the moment. And that's something that I'm really passionate about helping individuals with because of having been so sad at that point in my life myself. So the, the behind the scenes that I actually intended to share was, I, I talked about this last week, which is this morning for me, key brain going crazy again. Uh, I've had COVID and it was actually really unwell and actually <laughs> was like thank god for Amazon Prime because there weren't really any movies I wanted to watch on Netflix but I managed to find quite a few older movies on Amazon Prime that that I loved and that kept me sort of sane and kind of entertained in that period of, of being in bed for longer than I've been for a long long time um Anyway, I just wasn't well enough to really be doing much at all. And I really like to be productive. I like to get on with stuff. And so that's challenging for me. Anyway, as I'm feeling better, I, when was it? Uh, first, Thursday, or maybe Friday last week, I wanted to paint the wall in my garden for quite a long time. I was like, right, I'm going to be in queue. I'm going to get the paint. And I'm going to get on with it. And anyway, so Friday and over the weekend, that's what I've been doing, painting the wall in my garden, painting the fronts friends the fence in the front garden and it has given me such a sense of satisfaction and the reason I'm sharing this is when I was getting divorced luckily I know what I know about our happiness needs and actually I've written this down because it's episode 22 if you haven't listened in season one go back and listen to that because I talk in it about the happiness formula when you're going through something like a divorce like losing a job like a breakup it's easy to sorry divorce and breakup is pretty much the same thing isn't it but you know what I mean so it's easy to stop doing the things that you typically do that that help you feel good and then you blame the divorce or the the job loss for your depression or your panic attacks or whatever and it actually isn't that it's the fact that that has been the catalyst for you stopping doing the stuff that is it, it conducive to your mental well-being and we've all got these things like for me I uh, love listening to music I meditate every day typically in the morning and before I go to sleep I keep a gratitude list I work out there's a bunch of different things that I do and what works for each of us is going to be kind of similar but also at the same time different and so 
that painting the fence was giving me a dopamine hit. It was giving me a sense of satisfaction. It was somewhat sort of kind of creative. We all need to be doing stuff like this. And it's key, please, if you're going through something right now that is a challenge and it's making you feel less like going to the gym or seeing your friends, when I had the six months where Jimmy and I were still living together, but we knew we were separating, there was only like, probably a handful of occasions where I didn't go to my usual gym class where I didn't see friends because I knew if I stopped doing that I my mental well-being would be impacted and it wouldn't be the divorce that was the issue it would be the fact that I'd stopped doing those things that kept me on track it is imperative it's vital for your mental well-being and yeah painting the fence and the wall has given me so much joy particularly because I hadn't been doing much but also like it can be anything it could be baking a freaking cake or making a card for someone but it's the, it's the act of just making something creating something that gives you a sense of satisfaction and it is key but yeah it's episode 22 in season one if you want to go back and listen to that Okay, wow. Um, oh, two more things before I get into it. Number one is on Tuesday, the 4th of October, 7.30, I'm doing a masterclass, I mentioned it last week, called How Not To F It Up. Um, I talked last week about how in order to manifest anything, you need two pieces at play. Number one is become an energetic match to the thing that you desire and be consistent with this. And number two is don't mess it up. So, People, for example, might listen to my meditations. Great, they get into this calm, receptive, allowing state. But if they then spend the rest of their day worrying, it's like you've got your foot on the accelerator and you're pulling the handbrake at the same time, you are not gonna get anywhere. So you need to know how to feel the feels, paint the fence, meditate, all that stuff I'm talking about, but also not block it. So if you're a member, you can join for free. And if you're not, and you just want to join the masterclass, then it's £25. The, I think probably the best place, you can either DM me for the link or it will be in my stories, but it's going to be Tuesday the 4th. And the seventh round, I can't believe it's round seven, of Manifesting Miracles starts on Tuesday, the 11th of October, running for four weeks. Last one I will do this year before everyone goes Christmas crazy. Um, and that's all they're focused on. I cannot wait to teach this again. I am champing at the bit. If you want to be in this container, this energetic container, like I know that there's a couple of things that I can give you, that I can gift to you, that can kind of rub off on you from me. And one of them is my faith, my knowing, my understanding of this stuff. And when you're around someone who has that confidence, you can't help but kind of borrow from it. And apart from working one-to-one, -one, which I do very little of, you probably know, Manifesting Miracles is the best way to be part of that. If you're one of those people that I keep banging on about, if you're a good person and you are ready for a great life, you're so over not getting what you want, you're so over not getting what you deserve, please join it will be every tuesday 7 30 for four weeks it's a hundred pounds um it won't be a massive group do it online and you'll have all the recordings as well and those of you've done it before will know i really hold your hand through this process i will show up not just during it but after you've got any questions or whatever after i'm always here so please message me if you're thinking about joining that because i would love to have you. As you can probably tell, I'm really lit up about helping you to start to actually freaking live the life that you are destined for, that you desire, and that you deserve. Okay, so just checking my notes here. What I'm going to share today is actually something I, when was this? Must have been last year sometime. When I was single, basically, I decided to make the best of that time. And I don't mean <laughs> hanging out with loads of guys. No, I mean, it was, it was like this thought process of, 
I'm going to work on turning myself into the best version of me, the best girlfriend. I'm going to educate myself on relationship stuff. I am going to do the things when I'm single that maybe I won't have time to do when I'm in a relationship. I am going to, well, basically what I'm getting around to saying is one of the things I did was some coaching with a lovely girl called Rosie and we did a bunch of things I can't even remember all the internets because it was a while back and I typically can't remember what I did yesterday never mind months ago but in one of our sessions we were talking about self-image and basically there are certain thoughts that we all have that are kind of what what you'd call a globalized thought so instead of thinking for example i said a stupid thing the global thought is i'm stupid instead of thinking i don't look so nice today the globalized version of that is i'm ugly now there is an enormous difference between having the thought or entertaining the thought, I said a silly thing or I did something silly versus I am stupid. When you, when you entertain, when you allow in that real heavy hitter of the global thought, the globalized version, what you then permit in is this deluge of other related thoughts it's like you open the floodgates so this is what i know to be true is that energetically there are rivers and streams of consciousness of thoughts of ideas that are surrounding us that are obviously invisible but do exist so like for example if you tap into if you start worrying about money you then open the floodgates to everyone's thought who's ever worried about money and obviously there have been lots and lots of those the same with something like covid you're tapping into all of the negativity of mass consciousness when you do this and the same in terms of being ashamed of one's body like how much of that is there that goes on anyway I, so I'm just turning my notes over. I was doing some work on this with Rosie on self-image and whatever. And I think that, I can't remember how it came up. I think that we were talking about maybe doing some mirror work and unpicking some stuff. And basically what came through for me, what came up sort of light bulb moment that I had when I was contemplating this was, I don't need to do all of that unpicking and so on and so forth. All I need to do is this. When, when I catch, okay, because, let me just explain this a bit further before I go on. As I was saying earlier, growing up, I was not hot stuff. <laughs> the main thing was I was so skinny that that wasn't deemed attractive. I had a thigh gap before it was cool to have a thigh gap, for example. Anyway, and so it's easy for me to open the floodgates of negative narrative pertaining to how I look because of all those years of all of that negativity relative to it. Um, and actually I used to be so ashamed of my body. I was telling this to Daniel the other day or recently that if I, and I didn't understand this for a long time, but if I caught sight of myself, it would normally be if I, if I caught sight of some flesh. So like if I was wearing a 90 or, you know, a t-shirt when you, you might wear to go to sleep and I saw like my legs or something, I would have this wave of, it wasn't even thoughts. It was, it was emotion and feeling because there was so much momentum of shame and self-loathing and disgust that come over me. And I was like, for years, I didn't know what it was. I remember talking about it in therapy in my early twenties and it was really, really horrible feeling. And I realized latterly that there was just so much momentum around hating myself and how I looked that when it was triggered like that, it would be this physical, visceral, emotional, very powerful response, just because there was so much momentum attached to it. Anyway, what I was talking about with Rosie was it catching a glimpse of myself um, in 
I don't know, an unflattering, um, like an unflattering look, like maybe first thing in the morning or um, for whatever reason where I didn't look my best and how that could allow this deluge of negative thoughts in. And so we talked about, like I said before, um, you know, unpicking it, all this different stuff. Oh, there's Susie in the background. <laughs> she's, she's going for a, a different um, pose than she did last week, i.e. earlier today when she was on my lap. So, but the thought that came through for me was, yeah, I don't need to do any of that stuff. What I'm going to do is just have the thought, this is what an attractive woman looks like when. I think something, this is, this is how these kind of like, moments of insight come about like your subconscious will put two and two together and you'll have those light bulb moments that I so am enamored with I think I'd seen <laughs> Heidi Klum who obviously is a, a supermodel on um maybe America's Got Talent or something and there was a clip of her at home and she didn't have any makeup on and and she didn't look anywhere near as attractive in human terms as she would with all her makeup on and I think my mind had this come through and it's like if if she can look like that and she's obviously a beautiful according to the world's estimation woman it's like well yeah I'm gonna have those moments where I don't look my best it doesn't mean I'm disgusting it doesn't mean I'm ugly so this idea came through to instead of have the oh my god I'm so ugly which could really lead to a whole world of pain like I've said before if you think I'm so stupid I'm such a loser I'm 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 so I'm disgusting whatever it might be whoa you are setting yourself up for a whole world of pain that it is really challenging to bring yourself back from so what worked for me in in those circumstances was to have the thought this is what an attractive woman looks like when and then that's it. And that puts paid to all of that negativity. So if, if, the, if the sort of global thought that comes through that haunts you is something like, I'm stupid, you could reframe that to, this is, this is what happens when a clever person makes a mistake, whatever it might be. So when you're trying to quote unquote fix your stuff, there are essentially two options. One is you can try and unpick and you can do this sort of psychotherapeutic approach and go back and understand and dig in. And there can be some merit to this. However, the challenge with this is because of how law of attraction works, what you focus on, you get more of. And so whatever you're unpicking, you're going to keep unpicking. And this is in part the reason, if not entirely the reason why people can be in therapy for years you know for the rest of their lives and I've definitely worked with clients who've been in that situation where they've been going week in week out to see a therapist and they're not feeling any better so there can be merit to it but we must be mindful of potential pitfalls too the other option is and and this is something that I have seen is enormously powerful when it comes to working on yourself is garnering this mental strength where you just say no like last week I talked about the question that I've been asking on repeat which is how would 100 million me feel about this or what would 100 million me do about this part of the reason apart from what I described last week that this is so effective is because it just shuts up that negative narrative before it gets going, before it's like, oh, this is unfair, and I don't know about this, and nah, 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 all this crap that, that once it gets going, you are screwed, basically. It's really challenging to bring yourself back from that. So that question helps to put pay to that negativity. And so does what I'm talking about today. So as I was saying a moment ago, this is something that I have seen to be enormously important when it comes to your self-development, your mental well-being, your mindset stuff, is getting that strength in your own mind to, to not let those negative thoughts in. I say this a lot, you give them an inch and they will take a mile. And then you've got a real challenge trying to bring yourself back 
from that bombardment of negativity. Whereas if you just go in with, like I had the realization, I don't need to sit and do all this mirror work and try and work it all out. I just keep training my vibration upwards. And as I'm feeling better, different thoughts will become the norm for me. And as you keep thinking thoughts repeatedly, they become beliefs. That's all a belief is, a thought that you keep thinking. And so it's not about figuring out what to do when that happens so much as figuring out a way to stop yourself from doing that in the first place. So if you are someone who, like me, has a history or it's in your current reality of hating on your looks, on your body, give this a go. Anytime you see a photo, like for me, my daughter um, loves taking mug shots of people, me included. And I'm like, look, I really don't like it when you do that, because if I see an unflattering photo of me, that really can, has the potential to trigger all of those years of, of baggage. And if you're someone who's not grown up like that, um, I was listening to a coach the other day talking about how, you know, she was always the pretty one and known as attractive and stuff. She ain't going to be bothered by this stuff. But if you're someone who's grown up with that or got a history of that, then all of that baggage is going to potentially be triggered when you see an unflattering photo or you catch a glimpse of yourself in the mirror and you don't look your best. It's like when I went to Tony Robbins, he talked about how people have these invisible wounds and you could sort of metaphorically rub someone on the arm and not realize that you're trying to be nice, but they have this wound and they scream out in pain, not because of you rubbing them on the arm, but because of that wound. And so if you're someone who has this particular wound, then you will find this approach helpful. And as I said a moment ago, it will train your vibration upwards. Your natural vibrational state, because it's the same for everyone, is high vibing, is loving yourself, is seeing yourself through the eyes of love, is feeling good. Sometimes people say, I did it to, to raise my vibe. We never need to raise our vibe. Our vibe is naturally high. It's really the work is more about stopping doing like I'm talking about in the masterclass, the stuff that brings it down, like worrying, like being tough on yourself, like comparing yourself to someone else and so on and so forth. There's myriad ways that we do this. But this question, question, no statement, sorry, this statement will stop you from doing that stuff, which will naturally allow your vibration to rise. And when it's high, you are going to see yourself through the eyes of love. And, and this issue begins to dissipate ultimately to the point where you know this isn't something now that runs that ruins my life in the way that it did I can still be triggered because of the history but I'm not in the same place that I used to be okay let me just see if there's anything else that I wanted to say um yeah okay also related to how you feel about how you look we live in a day and age where the whole body positivity thing is mahusive. And like anything, it's a double-edged sword. There are definitely positives to this movement. But what I want to say, and this is obviously a, a, a tricky issue and another can of worms as I've been talking about, is that sometimes, as with this unpicking stuff and going back into the past, we can go overboard and we can get stuck. Sometimes with body positivity, it can lead into staying with a body or with a way of looking that actually you don't love and isn't the most loving thing for you to do. So somebody was talking about something the other day and I can't for the life of me think what it was now. Um, oh, I, I know what it was. It was somebody who was about to have a surgery to help them with weight loss and the mind was telling them that you know it was cheating and this that and the other here's the deal from my perspective god the divine the benevolent source of all existence is in all of it okay so if your soul like i talked about last week was suddenly splatted into your body and you had the full perspective of your soul only not the human perspective and 
you had a problem with your vision, for example, and there was laser eye surgery available, and that was the path of least resistance to improve your vision, just all be like, yeah, I'm getting that. Because the, the physical world that we live in is the spiritual taken to the furthest most point. So you can't separate the non-physical and the physical, the spiritual and the material, because the spiritual and the non-physical is in the material, is in the physical. And again, if, if your soul perspective entirely was suddenly splattered in your body and you really were finding it a challenge to lose weight because of a bunch of different factors and there's someone says, look, you can have this surgery and that was the path of this resistance, your soul will be like, who freaking Ray, sign me up without any judgment. And so say, for example, you really can't stand your nose and there's a surgery that you can get that is going to fix it. Obviously, I am not talking about doing it from a place of self-loathing, but if it is coming from a place of this is the most loving thing for me to do, not that I hate myself right now, but I don't like this aspect and there's a fix. Like that's freaking loving. And so it's not creating this demarcation between the physical and the non-physical or the or the divine and this this material world that we live in because for me god is in all of it and will utilize and use all of it in your life there isn't this judgment and so if the body positivity thing is leading you to stay in a body that you don't actually like and you don't love that for me is not a, an act of self-love. It's not an act of kindness. It's doing what is most loving for you. And also it's about health and well-being and so on and so forth. People are not always going to understand this because they're not necessarily going to understand the energetic component and the feeling side of things. It, it, so it's, it's, it's a nuanced, complex, layered issue. But you can cut through the BS by asking yourself, what would love do? What would love say? What would love have me do? And also, like I was talking about last week with that question, what would 100 million me do? Um, it, depending on how you word that for yourself, you, you, you might say, what would in, in love with themselves me do? And be led by that because what's right for you won't necessarily be right for someone else. And what's loving for you won't necessarily be loving for someone else. This is why we can't judge from just like the outside or from pictures and so on and so forth without knowing what's that person's energetic stance as they decide on what they're deciding on. But the key thing I want to say is that be led by what feels loving and know that the divine is in all of it and will utilize and use all of it and the more that you open yourself up to that the more that you open yourself up to that wisdom and that guidance from divinity itself which is omnipresent in your life okay so main thing is we want to avoid those heavy hitters of i'm a loser i'm ugly i'm useless be really aware that when you permit one of those in, you also allow this deluge to ensue in your mental narrative and you don't want that. And so, and the other thing really what I'm speaking to today is, is having that mental strength. There are lots of different ways to do this. And again, I've, I've mentioned this a couple of times, I know, but I'll be covering this in the masterclass. I'm gonna share all the different ways that I've discovered across the years that we mess it up and tools and techniques to manage that, just mindset stuff, things to say to yourself, things to do, because this mental strength for me is the most important thing to be consistent with it, to be strong, to not let the mind start to rule the roost in your own consciousness. This is massive. And also before I finish, I just wanna say kind of where I started, if you are someone who's used to hating on yourself, hating on your looks, hating on your body, I understand, I know how sucky that is. And please know that dealing with this mindset stuff is key. And once you shift that, all the other stuff will start to change, but you've got to shift that first to start to be able to have the clarity to see the solutions and ideas and inspiration that will help you to, to change. Okay, 
I really hope that makes sense. I really hope it helps. I don't know how long I've talked for today, but last week, I, know, I think I went on for like, for ages. It was almost like the whole summer's worth of podcasts that I didn't do had to come out in one freaking podcast episode. <laughs> So today's been a bit shorter. You might be thankful for that. As ever, if you've got any questions, then just be in touch either through the website or DM me because I really, really, really fucking love answering your questions. Brings me so much joy. Thank you so much for listening. I will be back next week. And in the meantime, sending you loads of love.